Welcome to She Knows Arsenal Extra. It's international break and we're going to try to find things to talk about for the next hour or so. I told you guys that I was going to find some good guests and I have delivered. My guest for today's show is Colleen. You've seen her on Latte Firm as well as the Football Terrace and now she's bringing the vibes to She Knows Arsenal. So everyone, welcome. It's great to, it's great to be here. I'm really excited to be here. It's, it's been a long time coming. I feel like we haven't spoken about Arsenal in a while, and um, we'll get into all the vibes about Arsenal and then Arsenal women, because we have so much to talk about. But I wanted to kind of start the show off with something a little bit different, because I'm obsessed with this Beckham documentary. Like, I actually think I'm going to watch it twice, because I just loved everything about it, showing <laughs> who he is as a person, yeah. all the craziness that he went through, his icon status, like he was so freaking famous and then also people have been saying things like i didn't know beckham was this good did you know he was that good or did you feel like he was average because i feel like some people think david beckham was average what are your thoughts uh i think a part of it i guess is how old you are what part of the world you grew up in and how much you watched uh beckham during that time because i actually i went to the same primary school as him actually um, not at the same time. I'm not oh. quite his age, um, but he's his family's from <laughs> East London, so um, he's always been something that's been like the pride of East London, where I'm from. So he was always something we've all known about, and he's always been a a star-studded player. And I know you're seeing the discourse online around, you know, is it him and Posh together being a spy scale that elevated him further? But then people aren't watching their games. Real Madrid are not signing uh, a sixth member of the Spice Girls. <laughs> you know, that's just not happening. You don't go to, to Italy. You don't go to France. You don't start like a, you know, almost uh, almost starts the torch, if you like, for the, for the MLS for Europeans. Because I had no concept of American football, um, American version of our football, until David Beckham. Um, but ability-wise, at, at that time, second to none. Second to none. He was fabulous. Um, so I'm a bit surprised, but it might be a bit of age. Yeah, yeah, I think it might be a little bit of age. And like, like you said, never watching him play, maybe seeing the ends of him playing and thinking because he played in the MLS that he wasn't any good or something. But that guy was out of this world good. Like he was that whole era of Manchester United was from something that you've never really seen before. That's why they want things that other teams have never won. And so it was so fun watching both sides of him football wise, being able to become one of the best players in the world, but then also mm -hmm. being like this super icon where everybody wanted to have the same hair as him, the same clothes as him, mm -hmm. you know, it, just, mm -hmm. it was just insane. And on this, like, I mean, this he side wore a do-rag to me of the world. Prince Charles, come on. <laughs> who does that? Like who literally exactly. does that? Like only Becca <laughs> does it. Gets it. It's, it's so cool. And like, she was Be Victoria Beckham. She's, obviously like sensational now but back then like I kid you not I wanted to be her so badly like everything of like what she was wearing hairstyles everything I was like she is so bomb like I'd never seen anybody like that before were the Spice Girls like the Spice Girls were fantastic here like we love them how crazy was it over there in regards to the Spice Girls like they're the highest selling girl of all time. It's insane. I mean, this this Spice Girls iconic here. Iconic. I think in uh uh was it 1999 when their their film came out, it was like you know Spice World, Spice Mania. Um, it's you know I think yeah. it just makes me feel a little bit old now when I'm speaking to people or seeing people online. They're like dismissing it. I was like, you guys weren't there. You were not there. <laughs> Just had to be there. It was so good. Exactly. So, yeah. But, yeah, like, watching that documentary was super fun. And um, one of the things I thought about when um, when the documentary was going was how you felt watching your man, Gary Neville, because, you know, he's <laughs> Beckham's, like, best friend. <laughs> And were you feeling away, <laughs> young Gary, growing up? I mean, I've got to be clear. I did not fancy a young Gary. It was until he matured into the person he is today. 
that I fancy to. Um, and you know what? I'll always take a bit of Gary Neville on my screen, and I don't care what anyone has to say about it. I fancy a bit of Gary Neville. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you guys, if you don't know, Colleen also loves Unai, so she, the, <laughs> she, we know it. We, she has a, a vibe. She has a um, what do we call it? Um, a type. She has a type, maybe. I don't know what that type is, but it's a type. It's Colleen's type. <laughs> Speaking of older players, still playing, though. Mm-hmm. Used to play for Arsenal, Giroud. He, like, made Serie A Team of the Week or something from playing goalkeeper. That was, like, that's, like, a once-in-a-lifetime thing that'll happen to a player, maybe. And if you go out there and you make a save or two, you're, like, literally, like, legend status. Like, it doesn't matter what that game meant. <laughs> You're like instantly legend status. And it started making me think if Arsenal, like let's say David Rea got sent off and mm. you had to pick a field player, like, you know, somebody out there um, to go in goal, who would you choose from Arsenal? Who, who do you think would be Ooh. the best player to go in there and play goalkeeper? Mm. That's a good question. And uh, uh, congratulations to anyone who managed to get a limited edition goalkeeper shirt from Milan with Giroud's name on the back because I don't think many of them are going to be popping out <laughs> again anytime soon. Um, but for Arsenal, there's so many things to consider because, of course, you're thinking, okay, who's a bit nimble, you know? Who can throw themselves to the side, you know, uh, and get up and down quite quickly? But you want someone tall, physical. My initial, as soon as you said it, my first thought was, uh, was Gabby big Gabby at the back I think he could do a job in goal uh I'm not sure how nimble and cat-like he is to be honest um mm-hmm. so I initially think Gabby big Gabby at the back or do you know what just because I think he's good at everything I think Saliba would do a, a, a great job but I wouldn't want to put him in goal <laughs> when we would need him in defense if we're there at 10 men so I'd probably say uh Gabby but I reckon there's someone there who's a bit underrated, who's very feline-like. Who do you, who do you have? Hmm. Who do I think I would put in goal? Because I'm thinking also that I want somebody that I'm not going to want in front of the person in goal as well. Like, I don't want to shoot myself mm-hmm. in the foot and have Saliba in goal, mm-hmm. but actually I need Saliba out on the pitch, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. protecting this yeah. person. So I'm thinking, mm-hmm. who can I get away with? That's probably tall enough. Mm. It's probably, I'm thinking maybe I'll go with Kai. That might sound a, like a weird one. Ah, I feel like I'm, you know I think I might go with Kai. I forgot about we're him. We're not going to miss him. <laughs> we're not going to miss him defending, right? You know, because yeah. he's not a defender. And you can stick Tommy, Gabriel, and Saliba and White in front of Kai. And then at mm-hmm. least when they're trying to like kick it to somebody who's big and tall. He can at least win the ball and like grab it. He doesn't mm-hmm. look too heavy. Like if he needed to like get from side to side, he may be able to do it. Mm-hmm. If my second option would probably be Tommy, that's who I'd probably go with. Um, yeah, because he looks like I- he can do anything these days. <laughs> yeah, that, well, yeah. Since we saw at, at the weekend, uh, I do like the the notion of Kai. Actually, I forgot all about Kai because uh, I think. Generally, you always want someone a little bit further up the pitch to jump in goal, so you can have at least your, you know, I know we defend, you defend as a unit, but, you know, your midfield and your, your main back four, if that's how you're choosing to play. So, yeah, do you know what? Actually, Kai's a good shout. Kai's a very good shout. Yeah, that's probably who I would go with, but um, <clears throat> you guys that are watching or listening, I would love to know who you would put in goal if for some reason Raya or Ramsdale was sent off. So you guys let us know in the comments because I'm super interested and why. I want to know your thought process behind it. So getting into actually like what's going on with Arsenal, we we haven't spoken since probably the run-in of last season. So Mm -hmm. I need to get Mm -hmm. up to speed on how (laughs) you feel about the season, how you felt about recruitment. Do you think we have a goal scoring problem? Like, what are you thinking? How do you feel? Because we're one point like worse off at this point, mm-hmm. like at the same point last season. We, mm-hmm. you know, are unbeaten in the Premier mm-hmm. League. We have one win and one loss in the Champions League, and we're still in the mm-hmm. Carabao Cup. So, how are your feelings so far about the season? Are you thumbs up, thumbs down, kind of thumbs in the middle? What are you thinking? 
thumbs up thumbs up um yeah i think you're right i have no idea how you're feeling to be honest with you so this would be quite interesting but uh as, as we both have like you know we're all on social media i do kind of feel like it feels like people are a little bit panicky because and uh, from my perception anyway it feels like people are worrying because we've not been as explosive or maybe explosive is the wrong word or been as like surprising uh especially in an attacking way uh when i say surprising i mean the jump level difference from two seasons ago to last season then from last season to this season um but for me i think we have a much better professionalism about us there's a much there's a much better professional way that we're we're managing games and that's what that that was our ultimately our downfall at the um last season and yes a couple of and you know a certain key injury and you know mistakes i think overall as well our management of games where we did lose or did drew or did drop points and i just think we are a bit more professional now which means you're not as exciting but i still think we're a, a very exciting team to watch we're not man city level now man city is a fabulous footballing team but 90 percent of people and even their supporters would say they're, they're they're boring to watch um because of the way they play so i'm very happy very happy with the recruitment now, if you wanted the cherry on top, and I know a lot of people are saying, I want an out and out striker. I want a, you know, like an Ivan Tony type of person. I don't think that goal scoring is our problem. In fact, we did we did so well last season. I can't even remember what the what the record stat is. Maybe you maybe you know it. But we went high and above above many 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 seasons yeah. leading up to that. But I think people, you know, look at other other. Mm-hmm teams and like you know well you've got Salah at Liverpool you've got Haaland and even Alvarez at at City Jackson looks like he could start to be you know slowly but surely getting there um and of course you know you have Son Richarlison at Spurs so I can see why people are saying that because it's always nice to have someone to rely on but in under Mikel Arteta post the Bamiyang anyway we've always been a team post post the Bamiyang I have to stress that again where we've spread the goals so Mm -hmm. I'm not unhappy. I mean, I do think we could upgrade Benketia personally, but I'm, you know, happy as Larry. I can't complain too much. How are you feeling? No, it's hard to be upset about anything when you read it, like everything that I said before, we're unbeaten. We just snapped a terrible winless record against Manchester City. And we're sitting. Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, joint top, I don't know, some, some spurs. Sp- sp- First man will probably like try to kill me off of the back of this, but we're doing top. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're, we're the same. <laughs> I don't care if you score two more goals against Burnley. We're the same. We're joint yeah. top um, after a big win. And we're, we look, you know, Champions League, you know, that Lons game aside, we've been fine, you mm. know? So, and one of the biggest things, like you said, last season was the defense and the fact that mm-hmm. we just didn't look as sturdy as we probably should. We were quite open, mm-hmm. especially on transition. And we look like we've squashed some of that, you know, through having Saliba back, obviously, you know, adding somebody like Declan Rice. We look a lot more sturdy, um, which is really good. Like defense is is super important if you want to win titles. So Mm -hmm. I'm content. Like I am content. I do feel a little bit more like I'm probably a little bit more edgy about wanting to get a number nine in because I do feel Mm -hmm. like towards the end of the season or maybe halfway through we might need something di- like a plan b we may need a mm-hmm. plan b to change things mm-hmm. up but right mm-hmm. now there's not really much to complain about you know there's not much to complain about i mean i can find something if y'all if, if you <laughs> want but it's not really much to complain about so i'm feeling, feeling okay um just just mm-hmm. in this because i want to get a, a gauge on what your expectations of the season were before it started where like what did you yeah. What were your expectations of the team? Uh, again, challenge for the Premier League. Uh, mm-hmm. To be honest with you, win the Premier League. I think the way that we spent in the summer and the way that we, you know, uh, kind of went out with a bit of a whimper towards the back end of last season. I don't think Mikel or anyone in the mm-hmm. Arsenal hierarchy was thinking, oh, do you know what? Um, if we can replicate that again, that's a good season. I don't think so. I don't think that's their their phase you know they're not looking to stagnate uh and i hope that's the case anyway i i, I should say mm-hmm. i don't know i'm not privy to what goes on in n5 um but 
you know, at the end of the day, we also need silverware. And that means, you know, you, I want a good cup run and I want to win a cup, preferably the FA Cup. I would like us to go quite far in the Champions League. That's real progression. And I know a lot of people say, well, you know, first season back, you know, you know, you shouldn't be um, expecting too much. And to be honest with you, I think I think I can be expecting a bit more in Europe because although we weren't in Europe, um, what the season before last, we have been in in a Europe European competitions. Not like we've not been in European competitions since we've left the Champions League. And we've been abysmal. It's not been great. Not been great viewing, and that has to change. And that is kind of also the monkey on Arsenal's back a little bit. You know, our European record uh, as a club generally. Um, so. I'm not saying they need to do the treble or do the double of the Champions League and the Prem, but we need to make a good showing of ourselves and consistently make this a well-oiled machine, you know? So it's like when you look at the likes of Madrid, yeah. you know, they're always there. Even if they, if they have a bad season in the Champions League, they're winning La Liga or vice versa, or they're going far in um, their cup competitions. And Arsenal need to get back to that. And yeah. I think it depends on, you know, your age as well from what you've known Arsenal as so you know I'm born towards the mid to late 90s uh, it was towards George Graham into Arsene Wenger and then we had you know our reconstruction era shall we say it uh, in the in the late noughties into the into the tens <laughs> I, <like what> <laughs> um, I won't use another word for it but um, we need to get back to that we need to be back at the place where if we're not winning titles, we're winning something mm-hmm. else. But we're still, you know, making a good account of ourselves in Europe. And that's, that's the level I think we should be at for this season. So I want a trophy and I want us to look back and be like, you know what? We haven't embarrassed ourselves. We've not regressed. And uh, I know that sounds like a tall order. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that's something that Edu, Mikel, the players, or even the, the Cronkies now at this point uh, wouldn't agree with. But I don't know. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. How do you feel about it? So my expectations were pretty similar to yours. I wanted a title race. And if we don't win the title to be within like a point, so not like weekly ending Mm. the season 20 points behind after being there for so long, but Mm. being within a point if we don't get it. Because I feel like when you're going up against somebody like Manchester City, for me, it's difficult to say like, you have to win the league because they're on a dip, like they've won it, what, five or six times, like in the last like seven years, like it's mm. hard for me to say. That. So I was feeling like definitely title race, a trophy. I don't mm. care what trophy it is, some trophy. <laughs> I'll take the Carabao Cup. Like, I mean, no, no. I would, okay, no. wait. So are you on it like an energy drink cup or no? Because I'm like, you know what? I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take no, that. I- <laughs> I, I used to, I used to respect it when it was the Carling Cup. I don't respect yeah. it anymore. It's something to add on to if you're making a treble or a quad. Mm. Nothing mm. Uh, I want to leave the season with. Uh, yeah, okay. it's an energy cup, and that's it. <laughs> uh, okay, so no energy drink cup, but yeah, the <laughs> just some sort of trophy and a good run in the in the Champions League. And I guess my my formula really is more like. If we go out, I want us to go out to somebody that's better than us. I want Mm -hmm. to go out to somebody that I know, like, I'm like, you know what? That team, that's a, that's a good team, you know? So what am I Mm going to say? Um, Mm -hmm. I don't want us going out to, I don't know, Porto. Like that's, that's not really what I think Arsenal should be doing at this stage, but equally, I'm not going to sit here and act like I feel like we have that much experience. I think a lack of experience in that competition may end up becoming something. So mm. a deep breath for me is probably like quarters, you know, something like that. Just don't embarrass me. Like <laughs> go out there. If you go out in the quarters, go out to somebody that is a respectful, like a respectable opponent, you know? Um, yeah. And there's all, there's questions at the end about like what should happen if those, those are not met, but I want to leave those to the end because, um, um, uh, because I just add add to the drama, you know. We won't say what we feel like. <laughs> just, just yet, yet. Yeah, but um, yeah. I think those were those are my expectations, and I feel so far so good. You know, I I don't feel like we're out of the running in any of that. Now, I wanted to mm. kind of gauge your feeling on Raya versus Ramsdale because when I tell you 
any video that I do, anytime that I talk about Rhea versus Ramsdale, it gets the most comments. It gets the most like energy, the most everything. And I'm surprised because I just personally, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say, how I, like, I think Rhea is just a better goalkeeper and I'm totally fine with what's going on. What do you think? What do you feel? You know, you always give it hundred percent. Like you always have like the clearest, <laughs> you know, on. I mean, I think, do you know what? I don't know what I think, actually. Scrap that. I don't think anything. I know nothing. <laughs> but, 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 uh, so the reason why I have so many thoughts is because of Arteta's press conferences and what he's been talking about when it comes to players, you know, having mm-hmm. two strong players in each position and things like this. And I don't think he's lying. I, I think you should have two strong players in each position. But I don't know if I'm seeing that. You believe your channel? Way... No, that's, yeah, that's also another lie. I don't believe myself. I'm leaving him. <laughs> I know nothing. I said I know nothing. Um, but I do think I, now I've had some time to reflect on the, Raya's had a few games now. It's not just been the odd one or two. And it's mm. very, I think it's clear. Uh, and we saw it from Manchester City. We heard a little bit in Arteta's press conference on how he wants his goalkeepers to play. And mm. He's, I think this is a signal to Ramsdale to say, like, listen, if you want to get in this team, you need to be able to do that. And we've seen the way uh, Ramsdale can sometimes hoof the ball forward. What Arteta wants is a goalkeeper to draw in the opposition, make it, get yourself on that last second before releasing that ball to create the space. And um, I do think Raya probably is the better goalkeeper um, than Ramsdale. However, um, it does feel. Hmm. It's hard to describe because it feels weird because, you know, Ramsdale has gotten us to his place, blah, 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 blah. Would have been really nice for him to start a Champions League game, blah, 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 blah. But sentiment does not win you titles. And mm. like we just said, I expect my expectation, and we're kind of aligned. Like, we want trophies. We want us to be challenging for the title. We want to be winning the Premier League. We want this to be the start again of another Arsenal dynasty. And let me tell you, dynasties don't should have no problem with this because that's how he became Arsenal number one. So if you're going to, you need to be able to rise to the challenge. Um, it's just one of those situations. And I do feel a little bit sorry for him a little yeah. bit, but listen, now is your time to shine. Prove to Mikel that you should be getting in ahead of Raya. And if they both compete in that way, we are going to have two very good goalkeepers on our hands. But mm. I'm not the one who's in London Colney every day. I don't know what, discussions are being had I don't know what talks get happened between the players the manager what their attitude is like so Mm. again I'm reverting back to my original lyric I know nothing (laughs) um so it's it's a lot of my it's it's for for fans it can be frustrating you're trying to fans want to know everything about everything and why and if they could live in if we could live inside Mikel's brain we would so I think we're just going to have to kind of accept. No. <laughs> very, very breaking bad and all this. I think we just need to let him do what he's got to do. Because at the end of the day, Mikel will either will die on his own sword. He's either going to take us to the promised land or we're going to have to say, you've, you've spent X amount, you've done this, that and the other, and it's not worked. Thank you for what you've done, but bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Like the, the point about titles are not built on sentiment I think mm-hmm. is the part that a lot of people are not quite getting just yet I think mm-hmm. Arsenal has been quite a sentimental club for a, like a while mm-hmm. but we keep mm-hmm. on playing that we shouldn't you know we we're not ruthless and so we've mm-hmm. been asking for ruthlessness for a while and now that we're getting it it's uncomfortable it's uncomfortable watching somebody that you like not in the team anymore like it's difficult and newsflash mm-hmm. anybody that we get rid of now or is moved on now, or is replaced now, it's going to hurt. Yeah. You're so emotionally attached to this group. So it's not going to feel nice. But I think when Mm -hmm. you're growing in general, it's uncomfortable. And it's fine. Like, I'm Mm -hmm. perfectly okay with it. Now, when I'm like, I think some people, when you say that Ray is the better goalkeeper, you feel like Ray is the better goalkeeper. What they feel like you're saying is Ramsdale is not a very good goalkeeper. That's actually not how I feel at all. Mm -hmm. I think... Mm -hmm. Rhea is closer to Ramsdale than he is to Allison. I don't mm-hmm. think that Rhea is like so clear of Ramsdale that it's like an insurmountable thing for Ramsdale to get to where Rhea is. 
And I yes. actually think he has yes. more of an Ederson anyway. I think mm-hmm. we literally have him in goal because of the playing out from the back. So if Ramsdale could learn a little bit more about like just calming down and like you said, drawing in the opposition and stuff like that, I don't think it's like the end. I don't think it's the end. You know, I just feel like if we want to win, we need to get real. Like we can't be just hoofing it long and scared to play out of the back and things like that. So I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. But you can tell that the fan base is struggling a little bit. You know, I was listening to the Arsenal Vision podcast and Tim was saying that it was so like there was a lot of anxiety in the crowd against Manchester City when Ray was playing from the back. And mm-hmm. he felt like it was more because of their emotions towards Ramsdale than anything else. Like, or even PTSD. As soon as you said that, and I just visioned the game, I thought of Peter Cech uh, yeah. a couple of seasons ago. Uh, you know, I just it got a, a wave. It reminded me of Leno and Granite Shaka against Burnley away from home. When they oh were like, God. back is running up and just passes it straight to a Burnley player back of the net. Like... I, we do have PTSD when it comes to playing. We need to heal. Yeah. We need to heal as a fan base. We have to heal yeah. and move on. <laughs> we need to eat, pray, love. Eat, pray, love. That's what we need to do. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was like, when the the um, Julian Al- Alvarez like oh, chant yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. I almost pooped myself. Like I really was sitting there, like, it's happened. Like, and what am, what are we gonna say from here? But like, it was because it, it looked like it went in. Yeah. It looked like no, no. it went in, and I was like. Yeah. No, mm. like that, that was the worst case scenario, but we got away with it. I'm not saying that Ray is perfect. He made some mistakes, like, but mm-hmm. I am feel like I see, I'm seeing a better goalkeeper, at least from the playing out from the back and claiming crosses and things like that. So I think we're pretty aligned on that. And, you know, we'll mm. see how things turn out there. Sticking with, you know, players that play in defense and things like that. There's been a lot of conversation off of the back of the Manchester City game around Saliba. This is the first time that I feel like I'm hearing rival fans actually speak about how good this player is. And it's so funny because every time that they finally recognize that a player is like our player is good, they instantly yeah. talk about them having to play somewhere else. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah, he's going to win titles with <laughs> us. He's going to win titles with us. So just, just no. But how 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 good is William Saliba? You know, how how good mm-hmm. is William Saliba? Because I was having this conversation with some friends and I genuinely feel like, am I gassing it by saying that he could potentially be the best ever defender that we've had? Or am I gassing that? Just, Center I, think, I think the potential is there. And obviously he's not there I think we both agree he's not he's not you know you have to win titles you've got to have the longevity to to do that of course um but he really moves me you know with the way he defends and sometimes I feel like I'm watching a new era of a centre-back but then sometimes I feel like I'm watching a throwback you know the way he would just effortlessly and intelligently rolled off Haaland in the in the first half when it was one-on-one and the ball was going through now a lot of centre-backs naturally would be square on, hands towards his back, trying to grapple him, and Harlem would naturally be the bigger person, he's massive, would yeah. with his strength roll you. Saliba has managed to have the the intelligence to take a bit of half of yard, have a bit of a shield, and then combat that by b- using his force to bounce backwards to be able to get the extra yard if Harlem was able to spin, but he fell on the floor. Rico Lewis, and Harlem is herring up ahead of him. Saliba got a- and that's just one example of his intelligence. Mm. I, and I'm not even saying this because, again, we have been starving, starving in our reconstruction era, which I'll call it, um, with centre-backs that we've had over the past decade and a bit. But, I, I mean, listen, you don't, you know, you don't get in Liga Team of the Year, you know, especially in France, how I, I would say France in Europe is probably one of the most critical countries when it comes to uh football Defending. football playing ability they are very harsh and you don't you know the plaudits that he gets you don't get that someone his age uh and at that point of your career so yeah. i think he's very very intelligent and i think he could be you know injury you know making sure he doesn't get any you know long term injuries or anything abnormal happening i don't mm. i don't see why not and um you know and i almost feel a little bit sorry for gabriel because 
I wouldn't say he's, um, you know, miles below Saliba when it comes to quality, when it oh. comes to centre back. It's just Saliba's just so young, and it's the story around Saliba. It's not just the player. It's you know, Mikel comes in, sends him on loan twice, comes back. Love thinking, drama. Yeah, you know, it's like a reality TV show. It heightens everything. And we spoke about the Beckham doc at the beginning, but this is how superstars are made. It's not just about being a good footballer. It's like a um, James Milner, great footballer, boring. Eight out of ten, you can rely on him, but you're not yeah. really going to think of him in that generational kind of bracket, even if he could, even if some could argue he did have it. You just don't – it doesn't move you. It doesn't get you that feelings. Yeah. And I think people from the noughties and below – before, you know, tacticos, you went on feeling of players, defensively, yeah. midfielders and, and going forward. So he kind of has that story. And I'm very excited now. I mean, he signed a new contract with us. So I just hope that we get to, to see a lot of that story here at Arsenal. How do you like, you know, I don't know whether I'm maybe going a bit Hollywood with him. But I don't know if you're, <laughs> if you're quite in my boat when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah. No, I am, I am, I'm gassed. Like, I really am. Like, watching him, I feel like I'm watching, like, Virgil van Dyke when he was, like, in his pomp at Liverpool, but mm. playing an Arsenal kit. You know, mm. where I was like, this guy is out of this world. I remember watching Virgil van Dyke and feeling like, are we ever going to have a defender like that? Because those kind don't come, they don't come mm-hmm. very often. And they definitely mm. don't come mm-hmm. and you know, this is where I say some Arsenal fans, I know we talk about Raul like a dog. And yes, he was a crook. But, you know, if it wasn't for Don Raul, we wouldn't have Martinelli or Saliba. I'm just, just going to say that. We wouldn't. He he got Listen. that right. He got that right. I will never Listen. shade Don Raul that badly because I know what side my, my bread is buttered on. Man gave us Saliba and Martinelli. The North does not forget... Not a bad word will come out of my mouth about the Don. Listen, <laughs> it took a few L's, but the gems that he put forward for us, the proof's in the puds. We're seeing it now. <laughs> I'll, I'll take I'll take a couple more Danny Ceballoses if that means I can get <laughs> Okay, because oh that's god, <laughs> twenty seven million. I also want to put out there because somebody was saying that. Like nobody else wanted Saliba, and like we were lucky to get him before anybody knew that he was something. Mm. Tottenham were trying to get him too, so hold that, hold that, because I'm sorry, <laughs> but Saliba is clear of anything that you have. Period. Mm-hmm. Okay, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, like Saliba's just on this uh, like another planet, and I just I feel like he could become like the best defender that we've ever had if he stays and stays healthy like you said what do you think about people saying that seeing Saliba play that way that he's playing really makes you realize how bad Kashani was I had to ask you about that because I feel like I didn't know this was a discourse of conversation I didn't know this this has been floating around on socials girl and I'm just like oh (laughs) I don't know if I feel that strongly about this statement okay because Kashani 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 was good No, no This is a, this, listen, I know the way he left. I mean, I was, I was very angry. I've still not quite forgiven him, to be honest with you. But I think as well, listen, put, put Saliba in the teams that Koscielny was playing in, you know? Okay. We could still see his quality, but there's no way he'd be, you know, one man can't do it all. He has a great mm. partner in Gabrielle. And it's all about partnerships and relationships in football. It's not a one-man sport. It never has been, never will be. And I just think that is so... I did, Maybe I need to be on social media a bit more. I did, I did not see this. Well, maybe I'm on it just enough. So I did see this type of craziness. It's, if, you're, if you think this, it's crazy talk. It's crazy, you know. And Arsenal has also evolved there. And when I say that, I don't just mean like we're better. I mean... When Koscielny was there, and listen, don't get me wrong, Arsene Wenger, forefather, love him. But the mentality and the culture at the club wasn't what it was. I think that's fair to say. We're at a mm-hmm. different culture, we're at a different mentality now at Arsenal. Back to, you know, the late 90s, early noughties era of Arsenal mentality. And mm-hmm. as we've seen at clubs like Manchester United, they have winners in that team, but they're not showing it because the culture and the mentality is not there. It's just not there. And that confessor 
maybe not to everyone, but to a lot of that squad. So to make comparisons to different eras, to different contexts is, is always very difficult. I think it's a bit disrespectful to Koscielny because he is a, uh, he was a fabulous defender for us, despite how it ended. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I don't think I, I don't know. What do you, I mean, I don't think you agree with it either, but. I, I was looking at much. that and I was like, you know what? That's a little far for me because mm-hmm. I think there's a certain group of defenders or center backs that we had at Arsenal that I thought were so bad, like so bad. Just a group. <laughs> you know, a group. Do you have a list? <laughs> they're, they're, they're there. If we all know who they were. Um, etc. Shelby, I thought was levels above them. He just like there's other players, like you said, that played in the wrong era at Arsenal, and had they had had better partners and better players in front of them or behind them, Mm. it would have been a lot better. You know, so Mm. there's so many players like that. I think Ozo, you can probably put in that category. Alexis, um, Koscielny, definitely you can put in that category. Mm. Um, We've had really really top players I remember Rashford saying that the the heart like the um most difficult center back he ever had to play against was Koscielny so mm. I think he's respected. like roses amongst thorns at those kinds exactly. of times I think, as well yeah. yeah so I'm like I don't know if I'd shade Koscielny like that you know I think mm. yeah so we can respect Saliba without like really going in on Koscielny because Koscielny was was quality but Seeing the way that Man- like Manchester City are without Rodri, I think mm. justified how I felt at the end of the season last season without Saliba. Because I was somebody that was very much so like, yeah, if we had had Saliba, we would have won the league. Like, you can't you, some you lose a certain player in your team and you just don't function the same. Mm-hmm. And if you watch Manchester City, the best team on the planet, loses mm. one player, but they were fine without Kevin De Bruyne. But mm-hmm. without Rodri, they've lost three out of the last four games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But people were acting like Arsenal fans were just making up excuses because we were having a difficult time winning games without Saliba. I felt like I feel like that justifies it. I I don't know what you think, but you know I, I was yeah. like, come on, <clears throat> like you, you have to see that every single team has one player in their team that they can't they can't function without. Ours is mm-hmm. Saliba. Mm-hmm. No, I. I think the end of last season, I wasn't as, I didn't give this that amount of grace, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. I was more, because, you know, I was like looking at, I was looking at it too microscopically in hindsight, in terms of, for example, the first half at the Emirates against Southampton and the Ramsdale um, pass out for the first goal. And I, you know, I was like, you know, that can't, that's not Saliba. But overall, the way we play and how integral he is to, well, you know, he's almost like, I hate to use an American football reference, but almost like a weird quarterback sometimes, you know, in that kind of high centre back role when we're just starting out and there's no press on us. And it's that almost that mentality. And it's almost like, you know, when you're lining up in the tunnel and you look at the opposition, you're thinking, right, who do I not want to face here? He is one of those players. And when you have a couple of those players out, it always gives people belief. And at the time, I was like, you know what, I know he, you know, he's very integral and I was scared, but I was thinking, we can't, you know, think situations like that. I was just refusing. But, you know, I think at the time I was more hurt and upset <laughs> as things went on. I was already dreaming seeing that parade in May. But you're absolutely right. And I think team, because Arsenal and Man City, I think it's fair to say, and not disrespecting Tottenham and their start to the season, but they've only played a handful of games, whereas Arsenal have done the whole season last season to prove this squad is good. That... Mm-hmm. You can, you can start to see, okay, how do we... If Arsenal don't have Saliba, there's a good chance here. Now we know that if City don't have Rodri, there's a good chance here. So even mm. if he does start, it's like, okay, let's isolate Rodri. Because like you said before, it's like, oh, you're thinking of De Bruyne. You're thinking of Haaland. Let's get rid of Rodri. So you're absolutely right. Um, some, you know, there's just some players that just have that staff, you know, that X factor that aren't, you know, attackers like you're... Your Messi's and your Ronaldo's of this world, and Rodri and Saliba yeah. are brilliant examples of that. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that's all I really needed because that was, I mean, I, I get what you're saying too. Like, there was mistakes definitely made um, at the back end of last season, but in my heart, I was like, if Saliba had been there, and he said it too, and so mm. did Gabriel Jesus. They mm-hmm. both said it. Mm-hmm. If he had mm-hmm. been there, we would have won the league. And I think it had a psychological impact on the team, not mm-hmm. just playing style but not having like 
your main guy back there. Yeah, and for sure. Watch- Manchester City just don't look the same without Rodri. So mm-hmm. it, it feels very much so like there's certain players in the team that you just are foundational um, mm. for everybody. And even Manchester City have one. Um, mm. I want to play a little game. I want to play a little game. Hello. You don't know me, but I know you. I want to play a game. Um, don't worry. Is this called the new Saw game? The new Saw films just come out? She's coming yeah, out here. So it's just a little bit of a game. Won't, it won't hurt. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I a little game. I saw something on, I think it was Rory's page, and he had said somebody had asked him a question in a group chat. And mm. I, I thought it was a fun game. You know, maybe it'll be fun to you. I don't know. But <laughs> basically, it was sell, keep, or let go for free. And the okay. three players. To choose from or Saka, Saliba, and Martinelli. So, who would you sell? Who would you keep? And who would you let go for free? <laughs> Play along in the comments, guys. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> sell, loan, or keep. And do, do you know what? It's a nightmare. But I also, you know, this is a this isn't a conversation for now. Maybe this is two years down the line. But newer Arsenal fans who didn't see, you know, the success of the, the late 80s or the late 90s or the noughties, mm. these kind of situations are very real. This is, a ver- this is not, you know, uh, hypothetical. One day, this will unfortunately be, be real. It's one of those things. So mm. um, that just caught me by surprise. But um, God, keep, sell or loan. The thing is, I had an initial oh. reaction. Sell or let go for free. Oh, keep, sell or let go for free. Yeah. The thing is, I initially had an answer, but it feels wrong. It feels wrong. <laughs> Lay it so, on me, uh, <laughs> Initially, when you said it, uh, I was thinking we, uh, it was Saliba, Saka and Martinelli, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we keep Saliba, loan Saka and Gabby leaves for free. That was my initial gut reaction. Now... I'm not happy with I, any choice here. <laughs> um, I just think Saka is, oh my God, Saka's our star boy. He's a future Bellum Door winner. But I also just think in, Saliba is just someone that just can never go. And neither can Martinelli, <laughs> but, oh God, I don't know. <laughs> it's so hard. What you did guys. you think? So... So before I give my answer, I do want you guys to go in the comments and let me know what you guys think and why. Um, It's just a hypothetical. It's not like it's going to happen tomorrow or anything, but it is a situation that can end up being the reality. Like, Mm. you know, I've seen people say like, you know, Saliba's bound for Real Madrid. And if Real Madrid come calling, you know, what, do we have a chance to keep him? I don't know. You know, is the French connection, is it strong enough? I don't know. Every player in the world, Beckham said it. Every player in the world dreams about going to Real Madrid, you know? So it's one of those. But I think I landed on, this is going to hurt folks. It's going to. But I landed on keep Saliba, sell Saka. Let- <laughs> I, have my I have my reasonings. And it, obviously, if I could keep everybody, I would. You know, yeah. the, the, <laughs> but yeah. the thing about Saka and Saliba is that the difference between Saka and Saliba for me is I think Saka is, is an excellent player that is the franchise in the, in the face, but Saliba is the biggest talent that we have and is generational and is the type of player that you're not going to ever see come through your, your, your club again. Like, I think you get it once in a lifetime where you see a player like that. There's not going to be mm. any other, like, there's not going to be another one on the market that you can buy. Everybody that you have after that is going to feel like there's nothing like Saliba. And so when I think about having to replace Saliba and the fact that a center back is not going to recoup as much fee as an attacker, and you could probably get another winger and they won't be like Saka, but you probably could survive. I hear it. So I like, hear it. You know, and the thing about Martinelli is, when I say let him go for free, I mean let him go for free when he's 30. Like, I want that <laughs> for 
I think that little asterisk right yeah, there. I mean, he's, he's like, I would love for him to be like for me now to like leave late and like it be like he's 31 and because mm. I just feel like he's a part of the furniture. I cannot imagine Arsenal at this stage without Martinelli. So I'd be okay yeah. with letting him free later mm-hmm. on in life, you know, when he's mm-hmm. old and whatever. Mm. But it's difficult between Saka and Saliba because there's yeah. They're both so special, so in different in different ways. But yeah. I just I'm never going to see another Saliba again. I just know it. Generational, yeah, yeah, yeah. Generational. generational. Yeah, I agree. God, get get that crazy talk out of here. Get that crazy <laughs> talk out of here. <laughs> yes, yeah, surprise! I love it. You guys play along in the comments, uh-huh. and um, if you guys are upset by the game, it was my idea. So um, get me. <laughs> not only she just played along, but. Arsenal win. Let's get into the mess. Um, let's start off with the big one. Is Jonas on fraud, fraud watch for you? He was, you on fraud, he was on fraud watch for me at the beginning of last season. And then I, I gave him a bit of grace because, you know, everyone saw what was going on. You know, the amount of injuries we had to even finish, you what, third was, wow, well done to, to us. But... Um, <laughs> I'm not happy, Jess. I'm not happy. I'm not. Um, I wasn't happy last season, but, you know, they somehow managed to put bandages over it and just stumble and spit splatter over the line. And, um, yeah, I mean, losing at home on the open day of the season at the Emirates to Liverpool, have some shame. No disrespect to Liverpool. No disrespect, but they're just not, they're not in Arsenal's league when it comes to the WSL. They're not. And it, I do have some opinions, but it, I feel like when I say them, I feel like I need to check myself because I sound like Alan Brazil or someone. We're made to go out and get her the minute she let her into your skin. Then I sound like a six year old guy. Who's like uh, I'll give me proper football back, you know? Um, like I, I um, this is my problem, right? Is that I mean, wait, I've got several problems. I don't even know where to begin, Jess. One problem I have is that I just find things too everything's too nice, everything's too happy, clappy, dancey at, at Arsenal women. And I'm not saying you can't have a good environment, but when you yeah. don't get the results, because we're not in Europe. Remember, before the season started. We got knocked out to Paris FC, and I know they played earlier today. Um, I think what well, they scraped. I think they won three two, right? I think they won three mm-hmm. two. Um, uh, that was a disgrace. Uh, that no, make no shame about it. That is a disgrace. Um, yeah. So we have to go into the season considering that we've strengthened. We've got players coming back. You know, Beth Mead, Vidima. You know, everyone's start, Mead Mead starting to come back, but not quite there yet. But. We had enough to beat Liverpool. And okay, the draw against Manchester United, we were clearly the better team. But what two, what two easy goals, two chances they have and they score. Forget goals. about it. We're not, we're not winning Calamity. the league. Calamity. The goals it's it's like, not acceptable. It's, it's really bad. Like, honestly, watching the good. team against Liverpool, I almost mm-hmm. closed the laptop. Like, <laughs> my laptop is- I'm not watching this. I was about to just like, because I just was, after we went out of the Champions League, I was like enraged. Like, mm-hmm. I just couldn't believe it. Because it was just, it was the most shocking thing. Because you just don't expect it. You just don't I mean, expect yeah. it. We should be like going through. And I know that people were saying that like, okay, well, you know, you have this qualifying round and it was a week after the World Cup. But I'm still not buying it. Like, I think... Paris we- FC. Girl, oh, I know. Don't I know it? Don't I know <laughs> it? Don't Paris know FC, it? not to be disrespectful, <laughs> but this is the Arsenal we're talking about. Arsenal women are one of the forefronting clubs in women's football since women's football's inception. It's, yeah. unac- that's un- it's unacceptable. Considering, it if we go through, considering the way we played last season being so decapitated with players... A full strength Arsenal squad should be looking to win that Champions League. They should be I looking mean, to get to that final. We recruited 
with the idea that we were going to be in Champions League. So we have all these additional players now. I looked at our team and I was like, like, how, like uh, at least four or five of y'all got to go because you're not going to get mm. any playing time now because there's mm. no Champions League. Not only that, from a marketing standpoint and like a Awful. commercial standpoint, that is absolutely like that's a nightmare. All the games that we're supposed to have at the at the Emirates, it's a nightmare. Like it really, really is. And then Arsenal give Jonas like the new contract right after he loses to Liverpool or we lose to Liverpool. And I was just like, let me stop. <clears throat> I just I, I just felt some I felt away. I did feel away. I know that they wanted to show that they back the guy, you know, and there's no problems or anything like that. They believe, but it just rattled me some, like in a different way. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Also, no, I'm the same as you. Yeah, for sure. I don't like the football either. Mm-mm. Like we don't play good football either. So I'm like, I'm not even enjoying the football. Like, what is our style? What are we doing? What is I it? mean, this is exactly how I was feeling last season. Even towards the back end when we, you know, we were, you know, just getting through things. It felt like a lot more of individual uh, performances and I, and like you know, individual moments. You know. That was yeah. brilliant. Whereas, yes. and I know, I know we don't have our full strength squad, but I should still, that Arsenal identity should be clear. It doesn't matter who's in that squad. It should be them not being able to do it to that level. And it feels like, you know, he's trying to keep uh, Black Stenius in the team and trying to keep Russo in the same team at the same time. Um, you know, trying to create something, trying to make something happen. And it's not happening. And it might take time. And you know what? He might rise from the ashes from this. But I'll be honest, I'm not happy. This is um, a disgrace. You've got Emma Hayes, you know, on the other side of the river. She's probably thinking, title number five, mate, on the bounce. This is yeah. unacceptable. Unacceptable. And uh, I don't want to see posts from the players. I don't want to see. You know, I love Jen Beattie. She's what? I, I, I love Jen Beattie. She's an OG Arsenal player. She is a leader. I love her. And she comes out after the game and she'll post something. It's good. You know, we keep going. I'm like, I appreciate the sentiment, but... No, I, I want to see it on, on, the, on the pitch. And it's not like I don't think they're not trying. It's just, listen, I think with women's football as well, um, and I think there's a lot of new fans that are coming into women's football. So there's a lot of there's two kind of dynamics. And I don't know if you feel this as well, but you have your original women's clubs who have been particularly successful. So the likes of Lyon, Arsenal, Barca, Chelsea, where their fans have more of the mentality and the, the, maybe the harshness don't know if that's the right word to use that you see in the men's game versus other clubs where it's just like, oh, we're just happy to be here. We're just happy that our clubs are finally like, you know, doing something. We're finally yeah. getting a game at the men's stadium, you know, whereas Arsenal's not in that category. Arsenal's one of the four, it's one of the four fathers, four, four, four mothers rather of the, yeah. of the women's football. And this is just, it's a disgrace. And maybe I could be overreacting, but, I just don't, we can't afford to drop points with the likes of Chelsea. Chelsea's our main rival for that title. Make no mistakes about it. City, I don't think will, City, United, I don't know why I'm including United. They're not going to, they did well last season, but they're just not quite there yet. It's Arsenal and Chelsea. We can't afford to be giving them a five point head start. You know, I mean, I don't think it's even five points. I know they drew, but you know, they'll be like, oh, we can beat these chumps. We can beat these fellas. This is it's um, it's too nice at Arsenal. It's too nice at Arsenal women, and that's yeah. why I say I feel like Alan Brazil. I just I feel like this doesn't feel like nuanced analysis saying that, but it no, does. It, it feels too nice. I know what you're saying. There just wasn't going into the match against Paris FC. Actually, when we played against mm. Lynn Coppings, I thought we were horrendous. I know mm. we, we won three 0 but they could have scored a lot of goals. My, the mm-hmm. matches were going I was like ooh something ain't right and then mm-hmm. we played a back mm-hmm. team and we got we got we got done and so for me it's like we've already started our season off in a bad mm-hmm. bad way why is the mm-hmm. manager not the players mentally prepared to go into a difficult time we know that you're mm-hmm. tired of the World Cup but we need you to get focused on what we're doing right now because this is what sets us up for the entire season losing the first game of the season and going out of Champions League the season is already has an asterisk on it. It's already messed up. You have to go from like a negative to try to get back to square one. So mm-hmm. I don't know what that was, but I'm feeling very like I need to see y'all do something against 
I think mm. Villa, right? Yeah, I need the, the Emirates. Yeah, yeah, I need you guys to do something against Villa to get me back on board. And again, like Villa are not an easy team either. Like they're an up and coming team. So if we're not on it, we're going to get smashed. Um, Russo. Well, they'll be licking their lips, Jess. <laughs> oh, oh, they'll be there. Uh, I'm done. Like, I just, I can't. But in terms of Russo, do we need yeah. to be patient with Russo? Because I've seen some, you know, kind of maybe is she, is she good? Is she not? Is she ready? Is she not? And mm. I, I just don't feel like she's a finished product yet. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, do we just need to be a little bit patient with her and allow the team to kind of start to gel before we judge her a little bit? Yeah, I mean, Russo is not the finished article. What, she's 24? I want to say 24? 24-ish? Yes, in around there? Um, and we, and I mean, it was even said when she was announced, like even Jonas said it. Alessia said it herself, I'm not the finished article yet, but I'm going to be. Um, and I like that mentality from her. But it's also depending on Jonas and whoever's going to manage the club in the future or Alessia... I'm already pre-planning his departure. Um, <laughs> uh, how are they going to use her? Because uh, I noticed against like United, it was um, I think she had one of like the highest amount of like uh, take ons and trying to stretch from the from the wing. And it depends on who we're, what dynamic we're trying to play when we're an an, an attacking unit or an attacking four up the front. Yeah. And I think this depends on you know whether we have our, you know, our best, you know, our best starting 11 available. If, um, you know, if Miedemar's available, Beth and that are in the midfield, who, what kind of structure are we going to go with? Because it could have just been the execution, but I was not really, it, it, it obviously didn't work out the best at United for me um, with Blackstonius in the, in the middle, Russo out on the wing, and then you had Little on the other wing, but coming in a little bit more narrow to try and, um, you know, create an overload. And I think the idea was there, just wasn't quite there. And I think Russo at the minute, where she is in her journey, she's more of a, she's a good finisher, but she's at this stage, her numbers are more of an, an attacking midfielder, which might sound a little bit mean, mm -hmm. but I don't mean it that way necessarily. She's still very young. She's just not that prolific goal scorer right now. But I yeah. love how she can take, you know, um, balls into feet, how she can shield a ball, how she can, you know, take on uh, a player. But yes. I just, we need to find a dynamic that works across the whole squad. And that goes back to your first point. What is Arsenal's identity? It doesn't matter if you're um, not the best player, but if you're in that squad, I should still be able to see that identity all the way through. And it's just you not executing it correctly. Of course, there'll be tweaks depending on the opposition. You know, and I think that's why they did that set up against uh, United. They thought, you know, we can get something here, especially on the counter, because United are at home, they're going to want to attack. So I get that. But it's just not quite clicking. And mm -hmm. I'm, listen, it's two games in. I don't want to go crazy. Right. It's, I probably already have. But I felt like this at the beginning of last season, but it felt like it was the character of the players and. I'm not going to dismiss Jonas. They did, you know, they did as well as they could given the circumstances. Like that squad was, you know, people were getting knocked down one by one. But yeah. this, this start, this can't, I, we can't be having a repeat of last season that, oh, well, we finished strong, we get good home crowds, we go again next season. Chelsea could be on their fifth WSL title consecutively. <laughs> Unacceptable. I mean, yeah. this, well, I guess, you know, this is what we're seeing in the Premier League for the men with Manchester yeah. City is unacceptable. And Arsenal need to stand up considering their position. They're one of the most marketable commercial women's teams in, in Europe, in the world even. You know, mm -hmm. I grew up in the late 90s into the early noughties. And let me tell you, no, no people, no guys anyway were watching uh, women's football. But I can tell you what, being from London, everyone knew who, knew who Ke Kelly Smith was. Everyone knew who she was. And I think Arsenal also have a responsibility here. They need to be much harder on themselves. Yeah. No, I, I, I hear you 110%. Like, everything that you're saying is, is definitely how I'm feeling. I just, I want to feel excited, like we're ready to go. And I feel like we're undercooked. And mm. I don't understand why. And there's so many new players involved. Like, there's still players I don't really know much about. Like, cool. Mm. Like, mm. I don't know. What, what how she fits in now because we bought Cooney Cross like we mm. have so many new faces and they what happens to Gio and her development that's a question I've been yeah. asking myself since she came back from Everton there's so many players like that I'm like besides Little 
and Walty, especially from a midfield perspective, mm. everybody else for me is like a little bit of like, okay, so what is going to be your role? Like, is it mm. we're going to play like two up front? Are we, are we still going to, are we going to play four at the back? Are we playing three at the back? Are we playing yeah. five in the field? Yeah. What, what are we trying to accomplish here? Do mm. we have wing backs? Do we have players that are good enough to play wing back? Like, I just don't understand what we're trying to do. And it feels like there's a lot going on. Um, but going out of the Champions League the way that we did is very disappointing. And so I expect to, the, I expect to win the league. Like, yeah, yeah, 100%. I, I still league. expect that now. <laughs> yeah. you, they can lose to Villa. I'm still expecting that WSL title. Figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Figure it out. <laughs> figure it out, Jonas. Figure it out. Figure it out. So, yeah, you guys, let us know in the comments how, you, how you're feeling about the women's team, if you guys have been following along. Because I'm sure there's thoughts, but I, I don't feel like a lot of people are willing to really go and talk about it because it's a little bit like, a, it's hard, I feel like, because you know we're still going to probably be fine, but are we going to be good enough to win the league? Like, mm -hmm. it's very fine margins. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, but so, the shirt yeah. that you're wearing looks great, <laughs> I guess. Silver linings. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're, we've always been Arsenal like fashion club. We, all, we always yeah. have been. Um, so we're always going to have the best yeah. kids. Just a matter if we're going to be taking any pictures with trophies in these kids. <laughs> that's, what I would, yeah. that's what I would love to know. Um, Jonas, mm -hmm. only you know the answer. You hold our, like, everything in your hands, man. You have to figure this out. Because right now, I'm, I'm devastated. But um, mm. there are some questions here from, you know, some Twitter questions as well as some uh, questions that came through email. So I want to go through these. Um, they should be fun. Um, this is from Gabby. Gabby asks, um, what would you do with BAR? Do away with it entirely in the prem and go back to just human decisions or tweak it a little? And if tweak it, how? I think this is off the back of what happened to us against Manchester City, as well as the big debacle with Spurs and Liverpool um, a couple weekends ago. I mean, listen, uh, appreciate the question, Gabby. Um, we could be here talking about this all night. This is a question that just goes on and on and on. I will put it simply, as a fan of sports, it works well in rugby. <laughs> it works well in the Australian League. Hell, it works decently in tennis and cricket, their versions of it, those kind of challenge systems and what you see on the board. And funnily enough, at the World Cup and in the Champions League, I think it works pretty good. It so, works fine in that class too, so. Yeah. So... It's, it's the Premier League. Uh, they need to, listen, go to semi-automated offsides. And um, listen, these generation of referees that are there, they're the same referees that were there when I was a kid. I've seen <laughs> these referees my whole life. Well, you need to get in some new blood, but that's going to take a decade as well. There needs yeah. to be new blood from all around the country. In the UK, or in the Premier League at least, a lot of our refs are from one area. And there's innate, and unconscious biases and conscious biases. So change the standard of the refereeing, you know, that whatever rule book they're using, whatever standard they're using, burn it, not good enough. Just hold your hands up and say it's not working. Bring in the mm -hmm. semi-automated and learn from other sports. I mean, that's how you learn. You, you learn from others. You learn from your mistakes. But right now, I'm here. Listen, it's, it's almost like, you know, if your boyfriend or girlfriend, they apologize to you one time for doing one thing. Okay, cool. You apologize. But I want to see for your actions. But do it a second, third, fourth, fifth time. At the end of the day, you're the one who's the mug for accepting the yeah. apology. You know, if you know they're behaving like a clown, don't go to the circus. The same goes with this Premier League. The club's got to stand up and say, listen, it, it's crap. And it's a billion dollar industry. It's not good. Not good. Yeah. I mean, it's not the technology or anything. It's the people that mm -hmm. are running it. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the one thing I would say is that two things that have come up that I thought maybe should be looked at is being able to look at um, yellow cards and upgrade them. You know, I think mm, mm -hmm. being able to upgrade like a second, you know, if I, th I think yellow cards should be able to be looked at and upgraded. That's one thing. Absolutely. Um, I don't know why that's not the case. And then also just stopping the clock when it's, when the ball is out of bounds. Like for me, I think that would solve this, heavy emphasis on time wasting and having seven, eight, nine minutes at the end of games, just stop the clock like they mm. do in other, other sports. And then mm -hmm. we just end the game at 90 and mm -hmm. people will stop wasting time because the clock is stopped. Like, what mm -hmm. are you doing? so those are two things that 
I thought that they could probably look at. But yeah, again, as long as they have the same people running the, you know, the VAR, like it's going to be exactly the same. Mm. Um, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier about expectations. And this question comes <laughs> from Corey. Thank you so much for your question, Corey. Corey asked, is a trophy mandatory this season? Yes or no answers only, please. <laughs> so he was very specific. Yes or no. And um, if, if so, what happens if we don't win a trophy? Well, I think we can both agree. Yes, it's yeah. definitely a yes. Yeah. And what sure. happens? I think it's. I know you're probably not going to like this answer, Corey, but it's going to it's going to depend on the context. Uh, because I'm inclined to say, listen, you spent a lot of money, Mikkel. You've done a great job, but does someone else now need to take over? I don't personally believe that. That's why I say we need to look at the context. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, it could be something. Di- you know, we could be like Liverpool, get a goal chalked off a perfectly good goal who knows what the future holds um yeah. so i will reserve judgment on that but i think a strong conversation and i'm not i'm not saying that saying goodbye is not an option that is most certainly on the table because you know the game is about glory you're here to win you know pretty football we love but we're arsenal um so tbc on the latter but on the former yes yeah i yeah, it's definitely a, a conversation. Every time I say that, though, you know, some people, they get very heated about it. And I'm just like, y'all, I'm sorry. But <laughs> we only got so much time on this earth. I need to see my team win, okay? And if As you we can't said, do it, for I need somebody who can. <laughs> yep, <laughs> like, yep. not trying to go through this time and be like, we didn't win anything, you know? Mm. Not, not Especially this group. This group is too special mm. not to win anything. We're so, not Tottenham. Let's be real. Yeah, we're definitely not Tottenham. So we need to win something. Uh, it's more than pretty football, like you said. Um, this question is from from me, actually, because I just wanted oh. to ask. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, I just want to be nasty. Um, in oh. January, because people were also asking about the January transfer <laughs> window and like mm. how you feel about it. But this is my mm. messy way of asking you. In January, if Chelsea mm. offered a Drake ESR swap again, would you take it? Sorry, if Chelsea are, offer a swap for... Yeah, so Madrid, in the summer, swapping they, offered, <laughs> they offered a swap between for us to take Mudrick and them to take Emil Smith-Rowe, and we said no. Oh, yes, I remember. Sorry, yes, 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 I remember. Yes, no, the answer's no. Sorry. Your, uh, Emil is right here. He is right here. Sorry. Oh, my I- gosh. <laughs> okay, so you're an Emilian. That's what we call... <laughs> The ones that are back. <laughs> okay, yes, okay, so you're in a million. Okay, so I, I get you. I get you. So what about his role though? Like, are you yeah. disappointed that you haven't seen more of him? Do you think he can break through? Like, what are your thoughts on Emil? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that the squad has gone to such an, a high level, and it's unfortunate for him because he's missed a whole season of that, where ceilings went up, like everyone's ceiling went up in a space of a year. And we're seeing mm-hmm. that again with Fabio this year. But I'm not gonna forget, you know, the season before last, before his injury how good he was and the place for him is a very good question because who do you, the only spot I can really see is potentially Kai if he's going to be continually played in that left eight or rotational and then maybe putting in a performance and then being able to come in I think he's fabulously talented but um we're gonna have to see what happens with him but I believe in him I believe in Emil but not in January I think we can look at it at the end of the season. I think January is a bit soon. But then also, like, who am I kicking out for, for Midrick? Please. Stop it. Stop. No. No. I remember <laughs> those games last year in January. I'm not going through that with him. No. Oh Sorry. God. Okay, okay. So, yeah. That, that's, that was my messy way of asking what you <laughs> and all that stuff. And do you think we need to buy anybody in January? Like, you already kind of <clears> said that, like, striker situation you don't think that we have like a goal scoring problem would you be like opposed to somebody like tony coming in or you no. think we should wait well i mean i would wouldn't mind us buying another like, i'm never going to say no if someone quality comes in tony in yeah. particular i have a i have a bit of an issue with i think he's a pr nightmare and i don't even mean about the betting i just mean generally the way he leads you know all these videos that pop out when the things don't go right you know there's a video about there's a video about it in MIB for and stuff. He's a, I just don't see him. Yeah, the one where he know. says, "Yeah, I remember yeah. that." <laughs> <laughs>
I'm not really sure how Mikel manages that, but that aside, listen, if a Neto or a Tony came in, hey, who am I to say no? I don't think yeah. we necessarily have a problem. I'm not going to say no to those two kind of, you know, the way Pedro Neto plays is phenomenal. And the clinicalness of Tony, I'm not going to say no. With that being said, um, I reserve judgment on January transfers until we get to about December. Because if I had to pick one, if we get like an injury to Rice, like a, a season long injury or a year long injury, God forbid, touch wood, touch everything, or <laughs> or Saliba or something, then, you know, priorities change. We're going to have to splash the cash on someone. And I'm not saying, you know, Partey couldn't come in and go back to that kind of role. But, you know, things pop up in the season. So I don't want to be overly uh, preemptive with January. But I wouldn't say yeah. no to an attacker if the squad is healthy. Yeah, no, I I hear you. We definitely have to see where we're at in December-ish before mm. anything like concrete can be said, you know, and I'm sure the club will mm. wait too. It's like, like mm. you said, a major injury to somebody else, we definitely have to pivot. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Which former player from the Emirates era would you put in this current side and who would come out for them and why? This is from Gabby as well. Mm. <laughs> That's a good question, Gabby. I know. She did a good job. Uh, do you know what? Like, I'm, I'm, uh, so what am I saying? Emirates era. So, for, for example. Not Henri. Tia, yeah, I was going to say, t- technically he was in the Emirates era, but he was not at his peak of his powers. Uh-huh. Um, uh, God, do, you know what? I have a, such a soft spot for Alexis, but I don't think that's someone, like prime Alexis, he yeah. would feast. But I don't think that's what this team needs necessarily. That's not, I don't think that's where we're, we're crying out for. Um, mm. I mean, I hate to say this. I know you're going to uh, say this. I, do you know who I'm going to say? I think so. <laughs> um, just based on the fact that everyone's crying out for a, a striker. Uh, <laughs> and I don't like the guy. I don't. I, I, I don't even say his name. girl. He who shall not be named potentially could have a place when he was at his peak. Not when yeah. we were helping him out every other season when he was out of an injury. You know, mm. that one season where he came through for us, what, one and a half. So um, that is it. And I shall not say any further acronyms towards yeah. this player. Okay. Yeah, no. It's the obvious one, I think, because people want a striker and are probably mm-hmm. our best or most well-rounded striker in the Emirates era was, like, if you can mm. get a prime RVP without... Or Eduardo, all... actually. Pro- if you didn't actually, get a leg injury. So Eduardo instead. That's, that's a good choice if you d- want to go away from the snakery. That's for sure. Mm. I do think RVP mm. is probably at, on a, like, just like the next level up. Mm. Yeah, no, he would be special yeah. with Saka and Martinelli, but he's he's gross. Mm. So there's that. <laughs> I have a second option um, because we're not really sure about left center mid. What about mm-hmm. Ramsey in the left center mid playing Ooh. where Kai is playing? Because like right but now, he the would positions. Yeah, like what Arteta is asking him to do. I feel like it's quite similar to what Ramsey used to do. Um, yeah. You know, yes, no, you're right. Yes, absolutely. Wouldn't need to defend that much, like because Rice is doing the business. Um, mm. Odegaard can play a little bit deeper. I think he's already playing a little bit deeper this season. And all he has to do is play off of the striker and score goals and get assists. Like, yeah, I feel yeah. like that's a fabulous shout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you said, he wouldn't have to defend as much. Wouldn't have to be as box to box as much. Yeah, uh, we could just utilize him where we need him. God, you know that reconstruction era, man. That reconstruction era. So kick in the head. <laughs> you know the problem with the Emirates era is there's so many projects in, in and amongst the 15 years. Like it's just mm. we started a project, it broke apart. We started a, started a project, it broke apart. We got injuries. Mm. We were all players away. Like I'm so done with that. Like we just need to complete the team and the project just needs to go. Like and, the and let the dynasty feast. feast. <laughs> it's yeah. just crazy. Yeah. 
but yeah, that was that was a really good question from Gabby because yeah. um, we've had some good players over the years that could have played in this team and made it better. For but, sure, you know, sure. they just they weren't around. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. So you okay? So that's that's the show. We did it. That's the end. <laughs> That's it. We did the questions. We talked about Arsenal women and we talked about the men's team and got to catch up with you because, again, we haven't spoken in a while. So it was nice to figure out what your expectations are and how you felt about the, be the uh, beginning of the season. Saliba, we played some games, you know, all that. So it was, it, it was fun. I, I really enjoyed the game, it. The game, like, aged me a little bit, but we, we played nonetheless. We played nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, I definitely felt like I want to play a game. But yeah, so uh, yeah, I, en I enjoyed it. You guys, let us know in the comments how you felt about the, the show, what you thought. Get your comments and all that in there. Make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel. And Colleen, is there anything on the horizon for you? Do you want to update people on what you're up to? Are you just making appearances <laughs> here and there? What are the vibes for the next couple months? Yeah, no, I, I'm making, I think it's very clear now that I've moved to <laughs> South America. <laughs> um, I think most people now know I'm not in London at the minute. But mm. uh, at the minute, I'm just trying to get, get settled and stuff. But in the new year, I will be producing my own content in English and in Spanish, European. And I'm going to also try and do some South American uh, takes as well, at both men and women. So I, uh, I just need to, I keep moving around a little bit in South America at the minute. So it's a little bit hard, but in the new year that's to come. But otherwise you may or may not see me pop up here, there randomly. So um, sorry about that. Uh, but you will see me <laughs> here and there, but hopefully it will be a fruitful season for Arsenal. And then um, we'll, come May, all of us will be in, um, in London for a very good reason, I hope. I know, I know. I'm hoping for it as well because you best believe if, if we win that league, I'm going to be all up and through. Okay, you're going to see me mm -hmm. everywhere. Okay, well, we we all dreamed of a dream of a double title parade, the women and the men, and uh... I mean, it's the dream. It's the yeah. dream. You know, Arteta. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's doing his part, but Jonas, you need to start. You need to start pulling your weight, buddy. Because <laughs> we need to get there. <laughs> Look like we're getting there yet. But um, mm. yeah. Super fun having you on the podcast and I'm sure everybody's gonna enjoy everything that you had to say and you know um we'll comment and all of that you guys will put all of Colleen's um information in terms of where you can follow her um in the description box and uh this will be out when you guys will listen listening to this will be out like 9 a.m on 9 a.m on Thursday so you guys will see that and then like I told you guys before the live show at 4 p.m. UK time will be with Lee Judges. So make sure you guys tune in for that. And um, we're going to try to get through this international break together. I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank and, you. Uh, at the Arsenal. Bye, guys. Thank you.